this video, I'm going to be breaking down a little gameplay for you, playing uh, this guy who's running kind of an interesting defense. And uh, first thing first, I want to talk about these pre-lit X-Factors. Um, obviously, in Mutt right now, you can basically get three unstoppable force defensive linemen and then essentially have a drop eight coverage where you get, as you can see, pretty much instantaneous uh, sheds. In my opinion, this is not good for Madden 24 because, and you'll see kind of how this game unfolds, but he's basically able to do nothing and get instantaneous pressure. And most of these X factors at this point, as you see right here, I almost take a safety. They, they're on for like the whole game. Okay. Um, so to me, I just, I, this is my appeal. Like, let's take this out of the game. Now that being said, obviously got to fight through it. He's actually running three, three cub and basically running a double Mabel coverage. One of the things he's doing though, that makes this double Mabel coverage really, really, really effective is he's using outside thirds on over the, to basically over the top of that cloud, creating a cover three cloud where you have a deep cloud flat, but then you have that outside third coming over the top of it. So it makes the double corner. It, it's hard. It's probably the best defense for double corner. And the other thing that he can do with this is because he can drop eight every single play and still get instantaneous pressure. A lot of your routes uh, that, that develop late in the play, they're not able to do that. All right. So obviously I'm starting out, I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen anything like this in a while. And then you just got to start getting stuff like this where the routes bump into each other, throw an interception. And I'm like, man, this is just, you know, this is just not good. Um, things are not off to a good start for me. And uh, anyway, going to get back on defense here. Now, I did notice in this game, he's kind of rocking, you know, pretty much standard bunch, uh, Colts bunch meta. And I feel like I actually played pretty good defense in this game. I was running uh, dollars, running kind of the updated version of our dollar defensive ebook. If you want to get access to that, link's going to be in the description. You're going to see uh, later on in this game, the defense pretty much kind of keeps me in the game, uh, for lack of a better word. Anywho, uh, kind of starting out here. And really, I don't know, just feel like it's kind of interesting in his combos. And uh, as you see, just the bumping, man, the bumping is so important. Like, that's what makes these, com that's the only thing, in my opinion, that makes compression a little bit bad is the bumping you get. I feel like you get more bumping in these bunch formations. And that's, that's unfortunate. I almost, I've started to do more motion out of my bunch just to try to take away like the bumping aspect of the game because it does create a significant level of inconsistency, but we'll get into that. Uh, it might be something I try out future. One of the things I'm doing pretty much every single time is I'm backing off the slot corner on the right. Now here I start to kind of figure out what he doesn't like. And I didn't get my, didn't get great adjustments off. He's actually able to get a good play out of it, but I start to kind of figure out on the first drive that he doesn't really like it when I use her, the defensive end. So if you guys don't know, you want to have lurk artists, at least on if you're running dollar, you want to have lurk artist linebackers. It's going to help you play the run a little bit better. But also, if you have a lurk artist linebacker, you can uh, in dollar, you can put middle linebackers with lurk artists and defensive end. There I was like kind of frustrated. I felt like that should have been a stop. Um, or if it, not stop, but like a KO. But uh, didn't get it. At least a tackle, something. Coming out of my second drive, and I'm like, crap, you know, I got to go down and get seven. And uh, we're kind of in a spot where, you know, we need to go score. And I'm kind of worried about these X factors. You know, I kind of know what he's doing. I know what I can hit. And then here, right here, you'll see, I mean, look at these. Uh, it's just, this is just a really, my opinion is he's doing pretty much the same adjustments every single time. And first couple of drives, I was like, man, this is hard to beat. You know, you basically have to take this little check down flat. But again, the sheds are so good. It's hard to it's hard to beat this because of how good the sheds are. And I start to figure some stuff out later on. I just hadn't played against this. If I played against this again, I'd probably have some better plays for it. The other thing that makes this good, especially specifically against Bunch Strong, is you don't have a lot of stuff that attacks that right side seam area quick enough for the X factors. And so here I go to a little short side flood. I was thinking this might be the move. Throw that, able to catch that, and that's actually a pretty decent click on user catch. Kind of come back to the ball, get away from the KO, get a first down. I'm thinking, okay, here we go. You know, I'm going to figure this out. Go to dagger. I like this call, or actually, no, short side. Yeah, go back to short side. And I'm looking for this corner route on the right. But again, I mean, look how fast I'm getting shedded. I mean, look how fast I'm getting shedded right up the middle. I mean, it's just crazy. 
And it, uh, to me, it's just, you know, what the heck? So I go to this dagger play. I start to notice something about this uh, this little fade on the right. And it could have had something to do with how he's playing there. That actually, I feel like that was kind of a lag throw. I threw that a lot sooner than than I actually was able to release it in game. But kind of got fortunate that I didn't throw a pick there. But don't worry. I'll throw a pick right here. As you can see, his 30-yard cloud, I mean, oh, my gosh. I was starting to notice, like, oh, that 30-yard cloud can cover that crosser, even though it's pressed up. I was kind of shocked by that. And obviously, I wasn't passing it great either. It's probably the main problem looking back at the game. Well, I'm like, crap, this dude has this dude has defense for everything. Now, the only thing he really couldn't stop, and I should have gone to this a little bit more, is just the RPO. He just did not have good defense for it. I feel like I could have gained five, six, seven yards every single time. It's probably something I should have done just to kind of, I don't know, just kind of a constraint theory play. First and 10. Let's see what I go to here. I think this is double corner. Yeah. I keep trying to go to this, and here I, he actually calls man. I'm, like, thankful he calls man. Get out of there. And I'm like, here we go. I'm going to score, and I get first and goal. So first and goal, and then I just do some stupid stuff here. I don't know what I was doing, honestly. I just feel like I was playing bad offensively. I haven't played bad in a little bit. I got in a car accident uh, this weekend and uh, just kind of been shaken up from that. So just haven't been playing much. So anytime you don't – and I've talked about this a little bit before, but the whole point of deliberate practice is discipline practice, in my opinion, the best way to practice – you got to practice a little bit every day. You don't have to practice for six hours a day, but you got to practice like, you know, for a good hour and a half to three hours every single day where you're actually intentionally practicing your reads. It'll make you sharper. You're not changing plays. Um, you're running the same stuff. You know, you're keeping your playbook simple so that you can maximize your execution of those plays. And I just haven't been playing. I think, I think the last time I played Madden for probably four days ago. So this is like my first time back playing. And, of course, I match up with someone that's got these unstoppable force X-Factors. And I just, I mean, it was just a tough game, at least at this point. So I go to this play. I'm thinking maybe the running back. I can hit that little quick throw. I actually found something with that quick throw will that not a lot of people are doing. I'm, I've been highball and free-forming it up and out. And he'll basically catch it, and he'll get like five, six yards every single time. To me, that's fine. Here I just make a, I just, um, a fat finger the adjustments. I accidentally flipped the play. And I got to call a timeout. Like, it's just bad. And honestly, I, I made the red zone a little too complicated, especially for the way he was playing defense. So I should have, I don't know, I just should have done something different. Shouldn't have been in bunt. Should have got out of that. Should have gotten to some, some RPOs or something. He has not shown any ability, you know. And I, at this point, I'm still thinking, like, honestly, I'm still trying to find some dots, you know, for his defense. And, you know, I guess I just, I don't know, I, I – this is a little bit more of a critical down and distance than I ended up really playing it like. And it kind of cost me. It, it really cost me. So anyway, I'm trying to throw these posts in the back corner. Uh, got a little ghost route. Hitches on the numbers with post routes. I felt like I had that tight end late if I didn't. And I also felt like if I didn't complete it, he would his momentum would take him out of bounds. I didn't end up doing that. Here you got to kick your three. I was just frustrated. I was frustrated with what I was you know, I'm playing these unstoppable X factors, and I guess he only has two of them now, so it made the game a little better for me. And I just don't know what I thought I was doing here. This is a terrible read and terrible combo. It's not actually a terrible combo. Like right here, I could probably hit that post, maybe even the tight end, and I just throw the stupid running back wheel. He's out of there, and I'm just kind of mad. And, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever, 14 0. All right, let's go out. Let's score. Let's score. Trying to figure it out. And I knew I had a couple plays for his style of defense. I knew I could manipulate that outside third on the on the on the um the short side cloud flat outside third adjustment. Cause I'm actually one of the first people probably talking about that in the man community. So you'll see I go to some stuff here, especially on this drive. I think that'll take advantage of that. But right here, I kind of see something and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna come back to this later on the game. But if you take a look here. I felt like this fade had a pretty significant step on him. Now, because I high pointed it, I get a bad animation, and and I throw it in completion. But I'll, I'm going to come back to that because I'm like, okay, I kind of see, you know, I might be able to get over the top on that solo side. So here I'm going to go to just standard dagger, and I feel like dagger really is the call for something like this. 
But I was just absolutely shocked at how well, as you see, look at that cloud flat. Oh my gosh, like that is insane to me. That that cloud flat, and at this point I'm like, crap. You know, I literally almost quit out. I was like, man, I don't want to play this. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just keep playing. You know, let's just get better. Obviously, I'm struggling against this defense for a reason. Let's just get better. Ultimately, if you look back at it, I'm throwing that crosser way too early. And uh, and I'm not I'm not putting the ball where only my receiver can get it. I'm not throwing the crosser open. I'm actually throwing it into coverage. But I start to notice something defensively here. So play some good defense. I'm like, okay with that. And like I said, I start to notice, okay, he doesn't really like it when I'm using this D-lineman. You know, the way I play dollar now, I basically try to change up my user. You know, so I'll use the linebacker on the left, on the right, and use the D-lineman. You know, just try to mess with them, try to figure out what they don't like. And I notice here, he really doesn't like me using the D-lineman right here. So here he throws that, and uh, as you can see, a nice little deep zone KO. It's just hard to throw stuff like that right now in the game. Third and five. And I can't remember what I ended up going to here. But basically, I'm going to send five. I, I kind of, my main my main defense was sending five. And then trying to use her here to the right. And then you see get a big sack, fourth and 17. He's actually going to punt the ball, which that kind of surprised me how much he actually punted. But I think he just, you know, had such a good lead. He does get balled halftime as well. But I don't know, maybe he can't kick a field goal from there. I think you can. I think I got, honestly, that sack probably changed the entire course of the game because that might have put him out of field goal range. Had he had the ball in the 41 or 42, that might be a field goal there. So that sack was actually a bigger deal than I remember it being. But now I'm like, okay, I got to stop messing around. I got to go score. I got to figure something out. And this defense is tough. I mean, it just, the way the sheds are, you see here, I'm like, okay, I know I got the running back flat if he, you know, worst case scenario, I got the running back flat. So I get the, I'll take that. I, I've thrown three picks in the first half. And then uh, here we go. So kind of going to double corner. And, and I don't know what I was, I mean, I was just trying to hit this corner route. So I figured if I motioned him out, I might get it. But look at the sheds, man. I mean, look at the sheds. And the crazy part is everybody on my line, and here we go, everybody's activated again. Everybody on my offensive line has 99 pass block. But I know I could go to this play triple out. I know that this corner route can get over the top on the short side, which is why I ultimately call it. And what you'll see here is basically my plan. So I'm going to go to triple out, and I'm going to call this super deep corner route, but I'm going to call it to the short side so that outside third can't play it. And basically my main read here is if the user does not go to the corner, I'm throwing the corner out. So you see here I get what I want. Able to get that over the top, and we're back in the game. Not necessarily even back in the game, but we're back. We, we scored. We scored. <laughs> uh, we finally broke through this terrible uh, this this defense, and, uh, and we finally scored. So got to give him some credit. I mean, the coverage is tough, what he's running, and really it's a drop eight coverage that it's just a tough coverage to beat consistently. There's not a lot of routes in the game that are going to, if you play that coverage well enough and you use her well enough behind it, it just takes away a lot of the main combos, you know, that, that you would run. And especially if you can get pressure, only sending three people. All right. So now, first and 10, I'm thinking, okay, get a stop and get back in the game. So I start sending this three man, as you see. I mean, he's just not, I mean, this, this, this is a great blitz. And, you know, I was kind of waiting all game for him to start picking this up consistently. He really never did get to anything. And so I'm starting to say, okay, I think I can cage him up. So here, second and 19, go to a little bit of an adjusty defense, playing a little cover two on the left, rolling the coverage, main, and, and then get him to an, into a false start or a, sorry, delay a game. But essentially what I'm looking for here is, is that, like I said, I'm just trying to sell out, kind of get a stop. And I know he doesn't like to blitz, so I'm sending it. I'm sending four, I'm sending, I'm sending three or four every play, and then I'm using the D-line, and that's kind of, at this point in the game, that's kind of like, okay, I've decided – that's how I'm going to play the game. I'm going to I'm going to use her there. As you see, he's struggling to pick it up. He's uncomfortable. As you could see too, anytime you can make somebody uncomfortable in the pocket, you have a shot. That's why every Madden defense ever has really found fundamentally and foundationally been built off of some type of pressure threat. 
some type of pressure that third and 24 ends up uh, hitting the back out of the backfield. I'm thinking, okay, he's going to go for this. And then he chooses to punt. Again, I think the reason for this is his defense was playing really well up to this point. And, and I, uh, and he, and he did get ball at halftime. So anyway, uh, I'm thinking, okay, if I can get seven, going to halftime tied, have a potential to come out and get a stop. I feel like my defense is playing really well. And that's kind of what I'm thinking, you know, at, at this point in the, at this point in the game. So seven to 14, uh, my ball and, and also starting to kind of find a little bit of a rhythm offensively, nothing, but, but then I go to this and again, I said, I was going to go back to this and I just, I'm just chucking this. I'm like, I just want to test him. It's first down and I'm able to hit this over the top and get enough wiggle room to get away from the KO. And we're right back in the game. Get a quick strike. I love this throw. I thought that was a, a big time play, you know, in a big time moment there. And now the whole game is completely shifted back in my favor, really, because my defense is playing good. Now, obviously, if his, you know, he just has not shown really since the first drive a good a good way to move the ball. And I'm starting to get really adjusted. I'm scissoring the left side. I'm man up to tie it in. You know, I'm trying to lurk the slot receiver. You know, I'm trying to jump anything quick because I know that he's not liking the pressure. So I'm trying to get him to make a mistake. Here he goes this, and I kind of read the routes. And uh, I feel like, man, that could have – I don't know what he was really throwing. I think he was throwing the tight end, but he had an uh, inaccurate there. No big deal. Uh, second down and 10, and this is the play. This is the play of the game, in my opinion, or like one of the biggest plays in the game for me off of that deep fade. But you see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize – this is a great user – I just recognize, okay, it's speed dig. I'm going to bait right off, jump the in route, take the pick. Big play, big Ray Lewis, free card, lurk artist, free lurk artist. It's the only reason he's on the team. Able to make the play of the game for the team. And now we're first and 10. Now right here, I'm thinking, okay, I can throw this cross or I might have a chance to score. So I see a look I like. Again, look at how deep his cloud flat is getting. His cloud flat is getting some nice depth. And right there... That could have been a touchdown, an interception, and a drop all in one time. Ends up being a drop. Second and 10. And this really, um, I kept trying to hit this. And I felt like this was open too. This uh, this wide side corner. But man, look at the sheds. Look at the shed. And this guy, I don't even think he has a, an X factor. Look at this. He doesn't even X factor. He just in the backfield. That's insane to me. Like, he's not even lit up and he's doing that. Probably, had, probably has double or nothing on these guys. I mean, just insane, the pass rush. And it just uh, kind of comes back to show, like, pressure bust pipes. Whether it's sudden three, sudden four, sudden five. See, again, X-Factor light up, gets off the block, kind of kills the drive. Fourth to 21, we're going to kick it. So the reason we're kicking it here is just to try to get up by one possession going into halftime. Ultimately, that's what happens. He comes out, doesn't really do anything. So we're going to jump uh, to the beginning of the second half and uh, see how this ends up going for us, for us. So again, I'm just starting to feel it defensively. I'm making good adjustments. And mainly my adjustments are essentially designed to try to jump the quick stuff. I'm not super, because he just, I just know he's, he's not comfortable with the pressure. So I want to send it as much as possible. So you see, I mean, I, I should be sending five almost every play off that edge, and he's just not. He's blocking, and it ain't working, <laughs> and we're screaming right at him. So really good defense, I feel like. Now there's a couple of situations where I'll actually change it up on him. So like third and 17 here, you got to be sending five. In third and 17, you got to be sending five. So I know he's going to go into this uh, dagger, maybe, you know, he's short side. I feel like to a degree I wasn't. I wasn't defending. There was no purpose like here. Roll out, bad decision, and we just bag him up. Fourth and ten. He should go for this one. I think he's gonna go for this one here. Yeah, he is gonna go for this one. So again, I'm just feeling like if I get a stop, man, I'm in a huge position to win. Bump the tight end drag, just get just enough pressure, bad pocket by him, and he ends up getting stopped. So then I'm thinking, okay, let's score seven. So I go to this play. The reason I go to this play is because I'm going to try to put the user in conflict. And really, I feel like it worked. Like, he he just a step behind, and I'm able to throw this this year. That's a throw that a man 24, like, 
if you just have even a step on them, this is a touchdown. I mean, you see here, this has been the defense all game. Now, I really had two decisions. I can either take the running back, which he bumps, and by him bumping that running back, it puts him a step behind. And I just feel like he's he, the, the way he was moving, he was just too slow to catch up. Get seven, and now we're in a completely different ball game. Uh, and it just kind of goes to show, like, you don't have to rise and fall with the emotion of the game. You can stay steady, and you just keep playing. And if you just keep playing and you just keep doing your job, eventually you're going to have opportunities, almost always. So you got you have, you have two choices. You can quit and get mad, or you can keep playing. In this game, I decided to keep playing. It ended up working out for me. Now it's 24 to 14, and I'm absolutely bagging him. Now I go to a little bit more coverage-based, and – Still, I feel like really good defense for what he was doing. And, um, yeah, literally, I mean, everything, our offense and defense, everything's in the Patreon. Completely updated dollar defense. I'm going to continue to update the dollar defense. It's my favorite defense ever. I mean, this this defense is a lot of fun to play. There's just a lot you can do from a disguise perspective in dollar that you really can't do in other formations. And I feel like I've really figured out kind of a good system with it. But anyway, here, I've got a double Mabel coverage to the right, double flat, trying to take away double corner. He ends up going a little post, good route, and uh, we end up giving that up. But, I mean, look at this. This is, you know, third quarter. He's 7-17 seven for 90 yards. And then he's uh, got a couple picks as well. So I feel pretty good defensively right now. And let's see here. Here we're getting a little aggressive. We're trying to jump a flat route. He actually throws this to us, but ends up uh, – or no, that was double corner. Actually, good combo. And I got a nice little KO. So he starts going to this, you know, he starts going to these double corners a lot on this drive. This drive, I feel like, was probably his best drive. And uh, probably my worst defensively from the since the first drive here. Going a little more coverage. I probably should have thrown that guy on the left in a purple. I don't know why, and I actually do end up doing that. So here you see I go to a max coverage. And see how he's tap dancing, he's throwing quick. That's the first time, that's really probably the first time I went to a true maximum coverage shell. And so you see the value of like every now and then just throwing that at him. Here I'm going to go to DB Fire 2. We're going to get really aggressive. And uh, we're going to try to just jump everything. I man the tight end up just in case it's verticals. I was so consistently concerned it would be verticals here. Doing all this pass protection. Really pressure wasn't there. Kind of force feeds the tight end. We're able to pick it off. And that's going to be GG's. Thanks for watching the game, guys. Always keep playing. Always keep fighting. At worst, you're going to get better. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get all my ebooks and all that fun stuff, that's going to be uh, linked in the, in the description below. Actually, I guess it's not going to be GG's. Never mind. Let's keep watching. Maybe he stops me here. I forgot what happened. I thought that was GG's. So here I'm starting to try to force this flood play. And I have it, but again, you see the X factors. And even though like I feel like I've really struggled offensively, I've thrown for 300 yards. So, I mean, it's – but I feel like this is probably – this is honestly probably the most I've struggled offensively in a while. And I think for a couple reasons. Number one, the, the X-factor pressure was there. Number two, I just felt uncomfortable against this defense. I felt like it was good. I tried to go to a little rollout. I actually had the corner, but they the, because they bumped, I didn't feel good about it, so I ended up checking it down. I probably should have just ran basic flood with the tight end corner. It's a little deeper than a slot app corner. But here I'm trying to go to that again, and here he just busts the coverage, as you see on the right. I thought I thought that corner just got bumped, so that's why I force-fed the corner route. Ended up getting out of there with my corner. I could have thrown the fade, and it would have been a little bit more open, but I just thought maybe the third got bumped and it would have covered it and wouldn't take a chance, and now he ends up quitting out. Thanks for watching the gameplay, boys. Hope you enjoyed it. All of the ebooks are in the Patreon. Links in the description below.